welcome to TriStar Digging. Appreciate you joining us this morning. Uh, it's been a wet weekend. This is Tuesday following Labor Day weekend, and we've had rain from Saturday all the way through yesterday, a lot of rain. So there's not much digging gonna go on today. Uh, I'm just gonna do a little work around the farm and we'll get into some of that work. And primarily, uh, what I'm working on today is I've got a bull problem. So if you know anything about farming and cattle, you know that I've got a problem. I've got 12 mama cows in here and out of the last 18 months, I've got two calves. So we've got a problem. And what I wanna do is work on my catch system today and my corral system, which, which you see right there, it has grown up bad. We gotta get that cleaned up, cleared up so we can get those cattle in there to check and see what's going on and there's the bull right there he may be on borrowed days he's not doing his job well before we get started clearing the uh, area around the catch pen and the cattle working area i want to talk about a little problem i've been having with the skid steer um it's a 259d cat skid steer love the machine it's been uh, faithful it's done a great job for me one of the weaknesses though on this machine is the uh, cylinder that releases the pins on both sides that quickly allows you to hook and unhook to attachments. And so let me show you that. This is the second one I've had on this machine. The first one actually was out of, it was out of warranty and because this is a common problem from my understanding with these machines is that they went ahead and replaced that first one. Uh, I haven't even called about replacing the second one. Machine's now six, six years old, I guess it is. And uh, this one's gone out too. Uh, it's just a poor, I think it's just a poor quality part for what it actually does. And the one I'm talking about is this cylinder right here. This cylinder is what uh, raises and lowers these pins right here. This pin will drop down to lock the, the attachment in place or it will go up to release the attachment. Same thing on this side, you got another pin over here. The problem is, is the weakness in this motor or these gears that are in here. So I'll activate it and show you what the problem, what it's doing, and then I'll tell you what I'm doing in the meantime. So looking inside the machine, I'm standing at the door looking inside, there's a rocker switch right here that engages and disengages that uh, cylinder to release the attachment. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put you outside the machine. I'm going to work this back and forth and give you an idea of what that does. So along with hearing it, you'll also be able to see this pin trying to go up and down. And there's the problem. With it fully engaged by this, these ears are not nowhere near enough up inside of this part in order to release a piece of equipment. So I'll show you, in order for that to go up, those have to go, and they won't because that machine's got it blocked, but they have to go away up inside there. I'll shut the machine off and I'll take this part off and uh, show you it in its full length there outside the machine. And then uh, I'll show you what I've been doing to get a piece of equipment off and on this machine. And it's been a pain really to do that the way that I've been doing it. That part is over a thousand dollars and I really need it. It's convenient to be able to uh, sit inside the machine and release attachments and rehook. But my goodness, over a thousand dollars for that. It's i uh, I'm gonna break down and get one, but it's just, uh, I'm a little bit resisting it right now. In order to get that off, there's just uh, some Carter pins right here that's that uh, slide out one on that side and then one on this side there's also an electrical plug right here that you unplug that and then there's a uh, pins on each side of that part right there there's the part in all its splendor over a thousand dollars for that uh, piece of uh, metal right there. And I suppose, and I may at some point take this apart 
and I'm sure there's gears in there that are slipping or whatever. I don't know. And see what all's in there. I don't know, might be some replacement parts that I could put in there. The motor seems strong, but it's just this issue. I'll show you what I've been having to do. These these arms right here, let me get something to point with. These, these ears right here are what needs to flip up to release that pin to release the attachment on your machine. Wow, I just whacked y'all in the head with a hammer. Hope I didn't hurt too bad. And after you get those ears flipped up on both sides, now then, I can take this bucket and set it down and then hook up to the brush cutter that we're gonna to use to do some clearing around this uh, catch pin. machine greased up it's warmed up and uh we'll get out there and get that work in just a minute but first i think we'll take a drone flight around that area just give you a before shot what it looks like and and i'll be honest with you it's a mess i've let it go way too long but it's time to get it cleaned up i've got to get these cows preg checked see if they're pregnant or not pregnant and uh the way the shape that's in right now it's it's not suitable for doing that this is the drone I use. It's a DJI Mini 2. And uh, this little drone has served me very well. It's, it's a 249 gram uh, weight drone, which means it doesn't require a uh, license to fly it. And, but you do have, there are still restrictions on where you can and can't fly them. But this one has served me really well. This is my third one. Uh, if you've watched in the videos in the past, I've crashed them into trees and destroyed them. The last one, the th our second one I had, I ran over with a dozer. And then uh, this one is this one is taking a lick. It's been in a few trees and had a few crashes, but it's it's still going well. If you're not familiar with drones and how we as YouTubers use these drones, uh, like I said, this one's DJI Mini 2. It's about, uh, when I bought this drone, it was like $699 for the Fly More Combo, which means you get extra batteries and, and a few extra things. But I was at uh, Costco last week and i think these drones down are down now to this little old 500 dollars, which makes them pretty affordable uh for a hobbyist it's kind of fun but this is the controller and then you just use your phone it's a you can use iphone or android uh phone and it's just got an app that you pull up the app and uh you're you're hooked up to this controller by this plug and this plug plugs into the back of it and that's basically how we do that let's get this looked at and then we'll get to work Diesel does not like the drone. <laughs> it's been a few times he's tried to grab a hold of it. just a minute about them i got 12 12 mama cows here i've got one charlotte cow and the rest of them are angus uh but the but the one in question is that big bull right there he's uh he keeps a check on the cows but i'm not getting any babies as i mentioned in the first part of the video he's been in here 18 months and i've got two calves so that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. 18 months, I should have had at least one calf crop and all these cows should be bred back. And all I've got to show for it is two little calves on the other side there. And if they're bred, he gets to stay. 
if they're not bred, he's out of here. I guess you saw that oh, I got into some high tensile wire electric fence wire this stuff right here this stuff right here I hadn't looked at the machine yet but I bet it's wrapped around it let's take a look well Fortunately, it didn't wrap around it. It spit it out. That is a bonus. I do have some something wrapped around it, but it ain't the high tensile wire. I'll show you something real quick. These cattle thought they was getting some food. So they come in here to the pen. And I was cleaning out this uh, holding pen area of all the stuff that was in there so I can mow in there and clean that up good. But I want you to look. Cattle are destructive creatures. These are their feed pans. These are their feed bunkers that I just pulled out of there. Absolutely destroy anything that they possibly can. But look at them, they look so innocent. Right, now I got everything I can get with the skid steer brush cutter and uh, all the rest of that. Uh, if you're not familiar with what that is, those stalks, those red stalks, that's poke berries. And when that's small just coming up, it's a uh, poke salad. Cook it up with some eggs and uh, it's kind of like greens. And it's really good. I like it. But when it's mature plants, it's these big old stemmy red plants with these poke berries on them. And I've always been told these poke berries are poison if you eat them, consume them. But anyway, that's a side note. I've got this to where it's all going to be handwork from here. Finish cleaning this up, cut all these poke berry stalks down, and get my alleyway clear. So on that back there at that gate, that's where the cattle go in. And there's a chute that comes down through here. And when we come down that chute, they'll go, they'll go into that catch chute and uh, squeeze chute and we'll catch them and, and that's where we'll check them. Gather up some hand tools and uh, get started on this. I'll time lapse this little deal and uh, we'll get all this cleaned up. making some progress now got all this stuff chopped down away from the crowd panels now and this is what i would call usable it's not beautiful by no stretch of the imagination it's not pretty but it's going to work well 
uh, got all those weeds cut down and uh, got it ready to use. I gotta fix a few gates. I've got a hinge problem with that gate and uh, when I was fooling this morning, this uh, this gate right here come off the hinge, so I gotta get that hinge set back on there. And you never know what you're gonna find when you start working on something, but look at that yellow handle right there. I've been looking for that sledgehammer, that little baby sledgehammer. I've been looking for that for a couple months. But what the plan is now after I do a little bit of maintenance is, I'm gonna have a vet come out, like I said, check these cows to make sure they're bred or if they're bred. But there needs to be access to get around behind the cattle. And there's no way to do that right here. So I've got a couple gate panels over here. So what I'm gonna do is move this chute forward a good bit, put that gate panel in there so that we can have gate access in behind this chute. And then on the other side, I'll just put a straight panel. So that ought to take care of our situation. And when I get it all set up like I want it, I will uh, walk you through it. I'm sure there's a lot of folks that watch these videos that uh, haven't seen this before and may be pretty interested on how this works as far as running the cattle through it. So we'll do that towards the end of the video. Uh, stay tuned though, we'll get this thing set up. I was getting ready to go uh, look at those gates and I remembered a friend of mine, uh, Josh, actually, he's actually the guy that bought my farm, the chicken farm I sold. I guess almost three, well, th over three years ago now. Josh is telling me that his granddad's an avid watcher of uh, TriStar Diggins. So I told Josh there I'd say hello to his granddad, Ray Connard. So Ray, I appreciate you watching the channel and I uh, uh, hope that you're enjoying these and uh, just stay tuned, there's a lot more coming. count that as a win I got that gate out between them other two gates without tearing anything up that's a plus for me I've got another cattle working system here uh, it's a really nice system actually this is a big part of it and then those gates there is part of it and then there's a whole bunch of panels down there and gates here that's a system I had at another farm where I was leasing it and uh, I just got so much work going I, I don't have time to farm like i used to so i let that lease go and finally got all this stuff home and and uh this is a whole lot better system than i what got set up in the field at some point i hope to build me a little barn to uh, work the cattle in and set this better system up but for now this is what we got now i got the uh, gate in to where we can access the back of the cattle when they're in the chute and uh, we can get in and out and cross through as we need to i'll come back to that in just a minute show you how that works you know, sometimes I take for granted that people watching the videos uh, knows what I'm doing. Uh, but when I think about it, there's probably people watching that's really curious about what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. So as I said earlier in the video, I wanted to kind of run you through how this cattle facility worked so that you get an idea of how that, uh, you know, I work cattle and it's similar. No matter where you go, people do it different. These setups are different. Everybody has their own theory, own idea. This is what's working for me right now. I don't have that better system set up yet. So I just wanna walk you through this and show you what, when cattle are in here, what I'm doing and, and walk you through the chute system to get an idea of what the cow's doing when he's in here. Also, when I get ready to work these cattle to, uh, to preg check them and, and test the bull, if you're interested in seeing that video or videos of working cattle, just uh, send me a comment. I don't, I don't know if people are interested in that or not. So the only way I know is if you tell me. So do that if you're interested and uh, just let me know that, or any comment. Any comment about the content uh, helps me make better videos for y'all to watch. I'm on the outside of this uh, catch pen and what I do, my cattle are bucket trained, what I call bucket trained. So I can take a bucket of feed or sack of feed and call those cattle, no matter where those cattle are in the field, they're coming uh, to that feed. So once I get them in here to this uh, catch area, then I would shut the gate behind them. And like I said, I've got 12 mama cows and the one bull, and uh, they all can fit in here real well. So once they're in here and eating, uh, what I then want to do is I can use this gate right here 
to start sorting some of the cows. So I'll pull this gate to me over to this side and then I can direct some of these cows that are in this catch area here around that fence line or, and into this catch area here. And then what I would do is shut this gate behind them there. So now then they're in a more confined area, which is this area right here. And then I can get in this area. And if I've got one or two or three cows in here, I can start gently uh, walking them this way to start going into the chute. And as I do that, I can grab this other gate and then I can pull this gate shut. And then that traps them in an even more confined area. And that's basically how I get them started down the chute. So when they're in here in this area, then they'll start down the chute. And as you saw this this morning, you couldn't get down through here uh, if you wanted to. There was so much weeds and stuff in here. But anyway, I got it cleaned out. But we're headed down the chute like a cow would be. And that cow is only wanting to go one way, and that's forward and, and to get out of the chute. So the cow comes into here, and then this is the catch system. When the cow comes into this area right here, uh, the gate, I'm going to spin around right quick. When the cow comes in, I've got the option of shutting this gate behind her right there. But typically what happens is she comes in here and sticks her head into this area right here. That shuts, and she's caught. And then at that point, for sure, I can come back here and then shut this gate. I also have the option of shutting this gate here in the alley like that to keep any more cows from coming this way. And that's the whole idea and purpose of putting this gate in this morning. This is what I put in this morning. So now then, well, I'll get to that in a minute. So as the cow, so the cow's in here now, her head's caught in this deal here so we do the work we need to do on the cow and then I've got a lever outside that I can trip that lever and generally she wants to push so she's gonna push forward and then out this door she goes out back into the field that head gate slams back shut and then I hit this lever and it folds back it's ready for the next cow also I'll show you how this works from the outside uh, when a cow runs through there the cows coming through here, their shoulders will hit this cage right here and it'll shut on them like that. Uh oh. <laughs> I might be in trouble. Oh golly. Ugh. Hey, can you come down to the cow pen? I'll just tell you when you get here. All right. <laughs> this ain't good. And this is the gate that I was talking about. Look back, the handle flat's right here. And that gate swings down. But it keeps this cow from backing up if she don't go in the head chute. And it'll also keep that next cow from getting in there too. That is a simplified discussion of that catch chute. That thing does a lot more. Those panels come out on the bottom. That door on the other side will swing open, let a cow out that way. All these bars that you see, these bars will fold down. There's a lot that that thing will do that. Uh, just for sake of time, I haven't, I'm not going over. But this is why that I put in this gate system this morning. So now then, when the vet's here, or if I'm here working the cattle by myself, I can now open this gate and get to the back side of the cow because now I have this gate shut. No cows can come forward through the chute and now I have access to do whatever needs to be done, whether it's castration, checking for pregnancy, shots, whatever. And that's what I didn't have before was the ability to be able to get back in here to work. And that's what this gate uh, provides me the opportunity to do. I have literally been wanting to fix that right there for years. <laughs> I'm just now getting around to doing it. That's going to make it so much easier working these cattle and doing what I need to do here.
appreciate you watching today that's going to end the video as far as the uh the cleaning up the cattle working facility and uh, doing the brush cutting that i did stick around for the message if you will if not just know that the lord loves you uh give us a big old fat thumbs up if you enjoyed the video any kind of questions or comments that you have i'll be glad to answer any of those and enjoy answering those comments and also if you had not subscribed yet go ahead and subscribe it and i appreciate you watching god bless thanks I appreciate you watching that video and sticking around for the message and we're going to be talking just a couple passages of scripture in Colossians chapter 2 uh, talking about walking in Christ and chapter 2 verse 6 says this it says as you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord so walk in him so Paul writing to the Colossian people here is making the assumption making the statement there that because they are believers in Jesus Christ because they have placed their faith and trust in him that they are to walk in him and the commentary says this about walking in him. Walk is a familiar New Testament term speaking about the daily conduct of a Christian. So that's what he's talking about there, that we are to daily walk in him. Well, what does it mean to walk in him? It says this, to walk in Christ is to live a life patterned after his. So basically verse 6 is saying, walk in a daily lifestyle, daily conduct, as in following the Lord Jesus Christ. And then verse 7 uh, I like verse 7, what it talks about, talking about being rooted and built up. Because I think about uh, the work that I do in excavation work when I'm digging up a tree. Some of those trees are really hard to get up. And it's because they're rooted very well. Maybe because of the type of tree it is, uh, or whatever the case, or how big it is. But they are rooted, they are established in the ground. So this passage of scripture, verse 7 says, uh, Being rooted and built up in him and established in the faith as you have been taught, abounding in it with thanksgiving. So at the first part of verse 7, it says, it says rooted and built up. So I get the idea, the picture of a tree that's rooted, that's grounded, that's, that's firmly uh, in, in the ground. So we ought to be rooted in our faith in Jesus Christ, rooted in the understanding that being a believer in Jesus Christ, we have uh, eternal life in heaven. And then it says to be built up. So not only just being rooted, but also built up like the canopy of a tree, a really big tree that's really built up into the sky. Uh, that tree has uh, soaked up the nutrients and the water in the ground. So we should do as a Christian, being rooted in the word and built up in Christ so that we are uh, strong Christians, not easily swayed, not easily disturbed, uh, that we're walking in the truth of the Lord Jesus Christ. So I'll finish up the last part of that verse seven. And it says, as you have been taught, abounding in it with thanksgiving. Paul assuming there that, that Christians are being taught, assuming there that Christians are putting themselves in a position where they're one, studying the word to know what the word says, and secondly, are they being taught? Are you being taught as a Christian what the word of God says and how we are to apply that in our lives? And then it says abounding in it, talking about what I've just said there, abounding in it with thanksgiving, giving thanks for what we have in Christ, being rooted and built up in Christ and that we are daily walking in his word and in his truth. So I hope this message has been an encouragement to you. I hope it's a blessing as well. I hope that you are a believer in Jesus Christ and that you're trusting in him. If not, I pray that you'll do that soon. And I hope that you'll consider the gift of God and that's his son Jesus Christ that by the sacrifice that he made on the cross, you can have the forgiveness of your sins and a home eternal in the heavens. So God bless you and thanks for watching. Christ and Diesel's, Diesel's wanting in part, part of the action there. If the wind had quit blowing. Come on, wind.